Alright guys, how's it going? So this video today is 20 blender tips that you might have actually forgotten about. I had to give myself a refresher course as well. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is changing values all at once. And it's pretty easy to be honest. What we can do here is we can actually hover over the X and if we hold in the left mouse button, drag down, we can scale uniformly. And this pretty much works for anything regarding a value. So left mouse, scroll down and we can type in a value. And that's one of the first tips. Now, also keep in mind, we can use mathematics inside of the values, so we can do something like times three. Perfect. So let's move it over to tip number two, and it's quickly resetting the color value. Now, if I come to the materials property, go to the base color, generally you'll pick your color. Now, if you would like to reset this, there's several methods. We can actually press the backspace button, you can see here it puts in the center, or we can actually right click on it and it'll reset to the default value. Now you may have noticed there's actually an update bug with the UI, it doesn't seem to update it quickly unless you scroll over it. But that's a quick way to reset the color values. Now while I'm here, remember you can also click on the base color node and you can actually change this to an RGB node and it'll bring it inside of the interface. And if you just want to check this out, how it looks in the shading editor, what you can do is you can go into shading and you can see here it drops down an RGB node into the base color. So that's just another quick tip for you. And the next one is really why I actually made this tutorial, and it's the purging the data. When I was playing around with materials, I had thousands of unused materials, and there's several ways we can actually achieve this. And the quickest way, to be honest, is if you go to File, Clean Up, Purge All, and it'll purge anything that's not been used. So you might have images and materials that are not necessarily needed inside of the Blender file, and if you purge all, it'll get rid of all the junk. So the next tip is a nice and easy one to be honest, let me just quickly duplicate a few cubes and this is focusing in the outliner. So let's say for example I've selected this cube and we can't find it in the outliner. The quickest way to be honest is using the full stop or the period key. So if we hover over the outliner and press period key, you can see it automatically focuses it for us and that's just a quick way just to quickly find the object in the outliner. Now, I made an add-on and then I remembered. Let's say I want to rename this object, if we press F2 on the keyboard, it'll give us the object name, so for example, cube003, and let's just call this cube new, and it automatically renames it. So that's F2 to rename. Now the next one up is actually the file browser. Now I'm just going to quickly jump into the shading tab, and sometimes you might notice that it gives you a whole bunch of folders. And this is set up for basically when you're texturing, so you can drop in textures. But you might actually notice there's an arrow on here on the left hand side. If we drag this out, It'll actually give us the system data. Now one thing I recommend you do is actually set up favourites. So you might actually go in and out a folder all the time. So if you actually just select the folder, right click, add to bookmark. Now another thing you can do here is obviously you can change the way it displays. So if you maybe just want text or you want a kind of basic view or you want a thumbnail view, completely up to you. And the next thing that I would like to talk about, or one of the things I would like to kind of point out, a lot of people don't know this to be honest. So I'm just going to kind of move this here. You can see here, I have a Blender file on my desktop. I can actually just drag this onto the UI and it'll give me a few options. I can either open it, link it, or append it. So I get asked this question quite a lot and it's mainly to do with the shading. So when I jump into the shading tab, you can see here, we actually have the HDRI preview. So if I actually go into layout and I'll go into something like the workspace, I'll drop down the viewport gizmo and I'll enable the HDRI preview and it'll pretty much put it in the scene. Now at the moment it's using the HDRIs that come in built with Blender and if you come to the viewport shading you can actually use scene lights and scene world and then we can add in our own environment map. You can see here the blank at the moment. And that's how you get the HDRI preview balls. Hey, <laughs> Now the next tip I'm going to give is gizmos. Now generally I have the habit of selecting an object, moving it, selecting this, rotating. If you enable gizmos, it just makes your life a lot easier. So if you come here to the gizmos or the viewport overlay, you can see here object gizmos and we can enable things like move, rotate and scale. And next time when we select an object, it'll bring up all these gizmos and we don't need to actually jump in and rotate or transform. So this is a very basic beginner tip to be honest. If you're ever in edit mode or even object mode for example, and you don't know exactly what these icons mean, you can actually grab these and pull them out. A lot of users ask, why is my UI different? And that's pretty much one of the reasons. Now personally, I'm not a fan of this, so I'm just going to scrub it back. And the next thing is, control and space. Now, what do I mean by this? So let's say for example, we're working in a timeline, I can press control and space, and it'll maximize the window, and again, control and space to minimize it. But if you actually press control alt and space, 
what it does is it maximizes it and it gets rid of all the junk it just essentially gives you the window so control alt and space and control and space are, are technically two different things now this tip might sound a little bit mundane but if you're on a dual screen i highly recommend it and it's basically creating a new window and there's actually several ways we can do this if we go to window we can go to a new window you can see here it opens up a new interface and generally what I'll do is I'll maybe make it a graph editor and then I'll drag it onto the second screen. Now there's actually another quicker way to do this. So let's say for example we have the outliner. If I right click I can go to area and you can see here duplicate area into a new window and this means I actually get the outliner in a new window and I drag this over to my dual screen. Happy days! <laughs> Now another quick tip, a lot of users actually forget about this one, believe it or not, and it's cycling through selection modes. If you press the W, you can see I'm actually selecting through the different selection modes. And it's just a nice quick tip, to be honest. There's a lot of users coming from Max or Maya, so Quad View is pretty much standard in the industry, and of course Blender has it as well. If you go to View, drop down to Area, you can see here Toggle Quad View, and the shortcut for this is Control, Alt, and Q. And we essentially get quad view and this is where actually using the new window comes in handy remember you can also right click here you can show the header you can show the tool settings you can show the menus you can even flip it to the bottom now i'm not a sadist but hey it's your blender you do what you like with it now one thing that i recommend is you don't necessarily need this status bar anymore so if you actually go to window you can disable the show status bar because we get the statistics here on the left hand side if I drop down the overlays, I can enable statistics. And just to quickly wrap this up, one thing that I do recommend, if you're, especially if you're on a dual screen, is if you actually right click, go to area, we'll duplicate this into a new area. And I'm actually going to change the outliner type to the blender file, and that'll pretty much give you everything in terms of what's in the scene. So it'll show you your images, it'll show you how many meshes, materials, things like that. And it's pretty much acts like a kind of scene viewer. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, support me in Gumroad, you know what to do, take care.